Hello, welcome, and thanks for joining me for another book chat. Today, let's spend a little bit of time with The Quaker Way, A Rediscovery by Rex Ambler, which was published back in 2013 in the UK. I came across this book because um, the publisher of this book also published A Secret History of Christianity, which I read not long ago and also chatted. But when I finished A Secret History, in the back of that book, there were a couple of pages that had that showed the other books that that publisher, you know, published, and this was among them. And since I'm a practicing Quaker myself, I thought it was really interesting, so I decided to go ahead and give it an order, order it, and give it a read. And you know, I'm really glad I did. It turned out to be really kind of interesting. Uh, the author mentions that in the introduction that he wrote the book really for people who are not that familiar with. Quaker practice. So the Quaker way um, is for people who are curious about that. And it's been my experience too, you know, that uh, when people might find out that I'm a Quaker, that the first thing they might ask is, where's the big black hat, you know, and do I like Quaker oats? Uh, so there's not always an understanding of what Quaker practice is. And so this book really runs it down in a really concise way. It's not real big. There's seven chapters that discuss uh, different aspects of Quaker practice. So I thought how I would structure this chat is just go through those seven chapters and talk a bit about what's described in each one of them. So let's get started with it. So the first chapter is called Finding the Truth. Quakers won't tell you what the truth is, but they may tell you that you need to find the truth in order to live well. Quakers obviously have a very unusual un understanding of truth. So Quakers typically have this uh, idea of an inner light, that everybody has an inner light. And this inner light is part of, you know, the it's a, it's a piece of the divine or the cosmic consciousness or the big energy of the universe or it's that thing, whatever you call that thing that's outside of yourself that you connect to sometimes that's bigger than yourself, that people term different things and some people describe that in a completely secular way um, and you know Quakers the truth there is the truth is up to each person so each person connects with that inner light and interprets that however they're led to do so and so that is uh, sort of the Quaker way around truth um, number two chapter two looking for God we have no creeds, priests, or official doctrine. How do we know what God is or even whether there is a God? The Quaker way of finding God has to be unique. So, yeah, Quakers do not have clergy, and so there is no structure. Um, there is no hierarchy. There is no minister. Um, there is no doctrine or creed. So back to chapter one, you know, everybody sort of is seeking the truth, their own truth, their own connection with uh, the inner light or with the light. And so there is no sort of program. Now, you know, people ask me a lot of times, are, are Quakers Christian? And some consider themselves Christians and some don't. So it's however you, the individual person, is interpreting, you know, their inner light and whatever connection they're finding with it and however they're wanting to frame that some people want to or some people you know get fulfillment from framing that in christian terms and some not so it really um really just depends number th chapter three meeting others <clears throat> meeting is a big word for friends by meeting together and opening up to one another, we find strength and insight and a basis for action. But it means also that we take responsibility for one another. So meeting, um, so the friends, so friends, uh, the Quakers call themselves friends. We call, you know, so everyone is known as a friend. And so the friends, uh, a meeting is a gathering of friends. So a meeting, there's a meeting house that is a place to go and sometimes it's just a house someone's house and sometimes it's an actual meeting house that's been built for that purpose and the meeting is a place where friends go and have a worship as a waiting worship it's called so it's mainly silence it's sort of meditative and one thing i will do i think I, I came across a video a while back of actually a history teacher who gives a little who does a video on youtube about 
Quakerism that's from a non-Quaker's perspective and from a historical perspective. And he sort of describes, he goes to a Quaker meeting. He describes this Quaker meeting in this video. So if you're interested in that, I'll put a link to that down in the details below. But the meeting is sort of what... Um, Others might call a service, like a church service, but uh, Quakers call them meetings. So chapter four, making decisions. The kind of decision making exemplified in a meeting for business is unique, surprising, and difficult to understand. How did it arise and how did it work? So this is true. You know, I, I did not grow up in, in the Quaker community. I came to it later. But uh, when I was first describing a decision-making process among Quakers to my sister, who is still, um, she practices a different religion, um, she can't really comprehend the Quaker decision-making process because it's not a democracy. There is no vote-taking because um, there is no majority rule. So there is no uh, majority rule, it would be felt, would be um, to leave a lot of people unhappy because if you have, uh, you know, you have 50 people who decide one thing or 51 people to 41 49 uh decide another then you have uh dissension right there is no consensus quakers do not conduct business this way it's sort of like a jury trial if you're on a jury you know and you have to come to a decision about whether or not this person's guilty or innocent but you can't take a vote you just have to, you're in a room full of people and you have to come up with a decision without taking a vote that's Quaker decision making. So I, there's a lot to go into it uh, that goes into it. It's not quite that simple, uh, but uh, com different committees, the way that the uh, Quakers are organized, uh, their decision making processes. Um, but it is a diff bit different than some other religions, I think, do. So chapter five, living faithfully. We don't live according to rules and commandments. We follow our conscience and the light within. How are we supposed to do that exactly? So again, going back to this light within, uh, so Quakers in this chapter, it talks about, um, you know, following your conscience. And so one um, thing that one a value that Quakers share is peace, typically. And so uh, some Quakers uh, don't believe in violence ever. And so following your conscience might be if you got drafted to uh, resist that draft or to, you know, uh, go ahead and claim your conscientious objector status so that, you know, you're, you might be still be drafted, but you would be drafted into a peacekeeping type of service like uh, maybe ambulance driving or something like that rather than actual killing, but different, you know, the, your own conscience. So you are the own, your own master of your own conscience. I think one thing um, that Quakers uh, uh, try to um, try to um, exhibit is that inner wisdom. So not only do you have an inner light, but everybody has their own inner wisdom too that's come that's unique to to them and to their experience. And so their inner wisdom, you know, with their inner light uh really is a guide to how to live right and how to live faithfully. So chapter six, um bearing witness. This is our alternative to evangelizing and proselytizing. But we have to remind ourselves what we are bearing witness to and how we go about it. Part of this is understanding our historic testimonies. So Quakers typically do not go around and try to convince other people to become Quakers. So there's not evangelizing or this type of missionary type work. Um... So the testimonies, um, Quakers have some core testimonies. They're called testimonies. And this is how to live. This is uh, guidance for how to live um, so that your life itself is your testimony. It's your witness. It's what you're, um, through how you're living, you don't need to say anything to anybody. You're just living this way. And so some core testimonies are peace, like I mentioned, equality, simplicity, um, integrity. Um, so yeah, uh, these are examples of, um, of Quaker testimonies. So peace, um, equality, um, as I mentioned, um, 
Simplicity is kind of a cool one. Uh, Quakers in the past uh, used to wear a spl something called plain dress, and it's not followed so much now, but uh, plain dress was a type of dressing very plain. Um, really, it was also to not only be simple, but to also reflect equality so that you didn't dress that you were uh, trying to show yourself better than anybody else. And, you know, so anyway, uh, chapter seven, changing things. If there's one thing we can be sure of in the Quaker way, it is that Quakers are concerned to change the world as are many others, of course, but do Quakers have a special approach? So, you know, I don't know if I would say that Quakers have a, well, we do have a special approach because we have a special sort of way, um, but, um, you know, other other groups have different ways of doing it. Um, Quakers, so if you're being led by your inner light and you're connecting with that and you're connecting, you know, with your guidance of how to, your conscience of how to live right how to live correctly so that you can live well and you're uh, living your testimonies of simplicity, equality, um, you know, etc., peace, um, you know, that has an action then in the world. And so Quakers typically are involved uh, today, my meeting, you know, immigrant helping people, immigrants, um, prison reform, um, it's really however the individual person, whatever individual thing they're trying to, that they're led to do, um, as far as the individual may be called on to do certain or feel that they're called to do certain work, meaning they're called to do something, you know, to make the world better, um, in, in whatever work that they're doing. And they, they, they try to connect with, um, their inner light to do that, to discern what their, uh, what their path should be with that. So Quakers have historically uh, and continue historically been very activist, very uh, prominent in abolition in the United States, as well as um, prison reform and other sorts of social um, issues and uh, throughout the the, the years. Um, so yeah, and it continues on to this day. So yeah, that's the seven chapters. I like I mentioned, I will link to that uh, video because I thought he does a very entertaining sort of presentation of Quakerism. I meant to say at the beginning of this video, I don't normally talk about religion and politics on my channel, and I do try to shy away from it. So I don't really know why I decided to out myself as a Quaker this time. I just picked up this book, and it it wound up being really interesting. And since I chat almost all the books I read, I uh, decided to go ahead and give it a chat so next time coming up next is going to be let me just pull up the cover um here the next book i'm going to chat is called madonna in a fur coat by sabahatan ali and i have finished this already so i should have a chat on this coming up very soon this book was just so beautiful so stay tuned for that chat should be coming up fairly soon until next time take care bye